Hey everyone. So today we're gonna be diving into the top P parameter when we're building uh, uh, with our AI models. So you can think of top P sampling as the AI's way of deciding which words to consider when it's writing something. It's like setting a rule that says, hey AI, you can only pick your next word from this specific group of words that we think are good choices. So the P in top P actually stands for probability. A high top P means the AI looks at a bigger group of words, including some less common ones, which can make the text more interesting and varied. A low top P, on the other hand, tells the AI to stick to a smaller group of more likely words, keeping things straightforward and on track. Now, how is this different from, let's say, temperature? Well, if top P is about picking the words that the AI is allowed to look at, so a hot, high top P means basically all the words in the vocabulary uh, of the AI models, and different AI models have different words that they can choose from. Uh, a low P is very few words. And then basically temperature is about how bold or cautious the AI is when picking from those words. So a low temperature means the AI is playing it safe, choosing the most likely next word to follow. But a high temperature from those words that are in the probability of being picked. And then a higher top, a higher temperature lets the AI be more adventurous, picking words that might be more surprising or unusual. And that's kind of how top P and temperature differ. So in short, top P helps manage the range of words the AI considers, making sure it doesn't go too wild or boring. And then temperature adjusts how daring the AI is within that range, balancing between playing it safe or going for the unexpected. So in some instances where you might want a high top P is let's say you're doing some creative writing and you want the stories to be awesome. So you want them to have so much more vocabulary of words to choose from. In something like technical writing or things, you might want a lower P, especially if it's like a specific subject or if you're doing a customer chatbot, you might want a lower P so it's not choosing from a broad range of words. Now, with that said, let's see how that looks like in practice. Uh, over here, we have, again, our bot, young, our, our character, Young Money, which we've described previously as our gangster who knows finances and uh, or well-versed in finance. And we'll be adjusting our top P here to see how the different uh, choices of vocabulary the model might have will affect its response. So here I've added just basically the uh, everything else is essentially the kind of default settings that we would have on the open router playground and except I've adjusted max tokens here. And what we'll do is we'll just set the top P really high. So in this case, what's happening is there's a large amount of vocabulary that the model is choosing essentially basically everything that the model has. And then the temperature will be, we'll see from that re, that selection of words, you know, how daring it'll be with choosing the next one. So we'll say, you know, what's up, dog? Looking to buy a house. Need some info. And then we'll have Young Money respond to us. And then I'll just say, in Colorado want a big one what should i do okay and then you could see basically young money playing in character and talking you know it's what it thinks like a gangster would speak like it's got the vocabulary all of the things now let's set this to a much lower p so that there's way less vocabulary for the model to choose from. I'm going to keep the same prompt. I'm going to clear the chat. And the beauty of the playground in open router is I can test things like this really quickly to find out the optimal parameters, or I could just go on open router and find the optimal parameters there. And I will place this and low top P less, I would say descriptive words potentially. Um, and we'll go here. And sometimes it depends model to model. Some models, you can change the P lower and maybe it doesn't look like it's making uh, a big difference. But here I'll say, I want one in Colorado. What are the steps I need to do? And then it'll keep going. Okay, sweet. So we can see here, maybe uh, a lower P might be helpful for something like this model because I can see even here that 
It's choosing from a potentially a lower set of words that might be more relevant to the character of Young Money. And it might be more relevant in that sense and make it better in role playing. So Top P could, you know, it's like temperature. It depends on the model too. But essentially the beauty of Top P is that knowing how it impacts your models on basically the breadth of words that it can choose from is going to impact how you build out your actual parameters for your model. So in some instances, if you want really specific items or things, a more narrow top P might be easier for it to hone in on and focus and get the words that you'd like. So with that said, this is top P. Uh, like we mentioned, tons of different parameters that we're going over and how you might use them. And hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, please like, like, subscribe, share, and have a look at all the other videos. Uh, talk to you all soon. Ciao.